When I think of the future of tiny houses, the homes themselves are only a very small part of the equation. More so, it's about the community that springs up around them, as well as all of the infrastructure. Here in British Columbia today, we have found the seeds of a very exciting project that is about to bloom into something incredible. Hi Kathleen. Hi Bryce. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Oh my gosh, I am completely in love with your house. Thank you. I am too. This location is just absolutely breathtaking. It is stunning. Mountain views in every direction and the lake out in front. Living gratitude. So how did you actually come to be here in this spot? Many years ago I followed my favorite rock band out here and kind of discovered the area and then um, I was looking online thinking I wanted to buy some land and found this beautiful huge piece of land. It's 380 acres, way beyond my means, but I spoke to my brother about some of the resources out here and his eyes just kind of lit up and it kind of became his passion project as well. So our idea is to develop kind of a sustainable community where we live in harmony and small footprint and yeah, and in a beautiful spot. And then you've got the tiny house here. So how did that all come about? Well, you're kind of responsible for that in a lot of ways. I started out just kind of wanting to be a minimalist. My daughter and I, we lived in a big house in the city and we just watched all of your videos and started thinking, well, how can we make this work? I lived in a very busy, big city. Did the whole marriage, kids living in suburbia, chasing the mortgage, being laid off two or three times and having to start over. When it happened this last time, it's like, do I want to keep chasing the mortgage? keep chasing all these payments and money 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 and I decided it was a good time in my life to make a big change so I sold my big city house and all my belongings and I built a tiny house in BC and my daughter moved to Nova Scotia and built a tiny house there and yeah it was just simplifying life less objects to take care of and move around I'm so thrilled to know that I'm partly responsible for this incredible <laughs> creation and how cool as well that you could actually do that with your daughter and actually how selling your home became two homes yes absolutely because we didn't need all that space and it was just the two of us at that point and we just kind of followed our soul paths now it looks like you're actually doing some other really amazing things on this property I couldn't help notice those geodesic domes as we came in yes that was part of the plan too we wanted to be able to grow our own food, generate our own energy, and just, you know, live beautifully. And you forget what good food tastes like. So yeah, we decided on year-round growing. Um, these domes were developed for growing in the Rocky Mountains, where we are. So in theory, we can grow summer and winter. And, and yeah, it's just kind of part of the whole being in harmony and, and simplifying things. Well, I would love to go over and take a look at those a bit later, but first we should talk about this incredible <laughs> house. So I've noticed you've skirted everything in for the winter. Yeah, since I'll be mostly stationary, I might move in, you know, a few years, but since I'm here, we skirted and insulated. And it's really clever what you've done over there at the hitch end as well, where you've actually got the shed built into it. Yeah, and fully insulated as well, but I thought it's empty space, I could use it for storage. And you've built this incredible deck. Yeah, and I wanted no railings on it, so I just kind of feel like I'm part of the forest. And how big is this home actually? The flat deck of the trailer is 30 and then eight feet for the gooseneck, so about 38 feet long, and we're about nine to 10 feet wide. Well, I would absolutely love to have a look inside the house and see what you're doing. Well, come on in. All right, thank you. Oh my goodness. This place is beyond beautiful. Well, thank you. I'm very comfortable here. You're immediately greeted by this wonderful and really cozy looking lounge. Yeah, and it's it's big enough to fit several people or just me. I can have a lounger. I can have it as a desk or an eating table. It has a lot of functions. It can be kind of a big L-shaped couch. Some of the furniture is movable, so I sometimes have a queen-size bed. It's nice to be able to, to mix things up a little bit. And then above that space, it looks like you have a guest loft. A guest loft, yeah. It's not super high for headroom, but it's excellent for sleeping. And then I have a little perch here. I like to pretend I'm a bird and sit up on my perch in the winter and drink my tea because the heat from the fire goes up there. And it's just a nice place to kind of hang out, you know, just another little space in your house. You can go and read a book or 
I have binoculars up there, so I'm out spying the birds and stuff out the windows. I bet the wildlife around here is just spectacular. Oh, it's endless. I've seen so many bald eagles, I can't believe it. And then you've got this wonderful wood stove to keep you warm? I do. It's a, a hobbit wood stove. It's one of the smallest wood stoves you can get. It takes teeny tiny little wood, but it heats the space beautifully. And is this additional storage in this space here? It is. One thing I noticed with many tiny houses is they didn't consider where you'd hang your coats or put your brooms or your boots and stuff. And we have many seasons here, so it was nice to have a closet. It's kind of different in a tiny home. And then moving into the kitchen space, you've got a lot of room to work in here. I do. Yeah, it was a nice sized kitchen and washer and dryer combo, which is nice. You've got full size appliances everywhere? Um, they're actually a little bit smaller. They're 24 inch appliances. And the fridge is just a little taller, so you get just about as much room. And freezer in the bottom, fridge up top. And nice having counter top on both sides and a place to kind of wash and dry your dishes. One of the things that I really like about this whole home is all of the little wooden details everywhere, like these gorgeous live edge window sills. Yeah, and I asked Seth to do them everywhere on the main floor here because each one's like a work of art. Yeah, just bringing a little nature in here and leaving it in its natural form. The mason jar light fittings look great up there too. Yeah, they were a dream of mine and I did a little research and found you could buy parts online and kind of do-it-yourself projects. I did it in the back bathroom as well. And speaking of the bathroom, should we have a look at that? Absolutely. All right. This is my yeah, piece de resistance, my tub. It's huge. It is, but I do a lot of great thinking in there. And it was my one thing, is to build a tiny house around this tub, because this tub's coming. And the placement of that window as well, what an incredible view you have right from your hot tub. Yeah, and you can sit in the tub and see the stars at night, oh. and when the full moon is out, it just pours in here and lights up the tiles. It's pretty spectacular. I might have to move into this one. <laughs> And then behind us, we've got the basin and toilet. Yes, we do. I decided to go with a flush toilet because of regulations in the area. I was going to do composting, but they require a flush toilet and a septic system, so I don't mind it. It's a luxury for sure. And one of my favorite things about the bathroom is the doors that Nelson Tiny Houses built. They do this gorgeous metal hardware, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, it just yeah. brings in so much rustic charm. Yeah, and it's certainly a mix of like rustic and modern. And then the bedrooms through here. It is, just up a few steps into the gooseneck part of the trailer. After you. Thank you. Wow, look at all the art in here. Yeah, it's a little bit too much art for the small space, but it's something I couldn't give up. I've painted them and they had to come with me. I actually think it fits the space brilliantly. And how cool that you can actually showcase all of your art. This is like your own private bedroom gallery. It is, yeah. And not too many people have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> And is this a dog bed down here? It is a dog bed. I've always been a cat person and they said, no, you gotta have a dog out here. So I got a puppy a year ago. She's awesome. She's a big dog. So this is her little bed space in here. And this bedroom space is just so nice. It really does make a, quite a big difference to be able to stand up in your bedroom, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. Yeah, and that was on my wish list as well. Yeah, I'm getting too old to crawl up in a loft all the time. So obviously this tiny house on the property is part of kind of a much larger project where you've got the solar system and the geodesic greenhouses and all that sort of thing. But just for this tiny house, what was the cost of this project? I'm going to say it's between like 90000 and and 100000 I went for quite a high-end trailer and I kind of spoiled myself in certain areas. So it's a little pricier than most tiny homes but it's cheaper than a regular house for sure certainly is and i think that investment was well worth it to get this level of quality and finish in a home yeah because really it is a home people think oh it's a tiny house but really it's got everything that a regular house does you've been living in this home now for two years how are you finding it i love it like i honestly i have zero regrets doing this i'm definitely not stressed anymore um it's funny when i was back in my stressful life i'd go to to maui for a couple of weeks and i'd refer to myself as Island Cath because it was almost like a different persona showed up in Hawaii and I find that is here as well as you don't sweat the small stuff you live more in the moment you appreciate you know the sounds of the birds and the sound of the water and all the stuff you can pick up when you turn off all the outer world noise it's where we're supposed to be we're supposed to be reconnecting with the earth and with the environment and even when you're having a bad day you look around and you say wow well, in a bad day in a place like this is pretty bearable. Now, if it's okay with you, I would love for us to go and see some of those geodesic greenhouses because they just look so interesting to me. Let's do it. 
So what was actually the reason for building all of these big geodomes here? Kind of part of the whole sustainable community type idea. We can grow our own food here, generate our own power, and live simply and off the grid. And you've actually turned growing food in these domes into a business, haven't you? I have, yeah. I named the company Dome Grown Organics, and it's just been a year, but it's pretty exciting. And what's going on in this big shipping container here? Um, that's kind of the heart and soul of our power system. We have a big array of solar panels on the roof of it and an array of solar panels out in the field here. And yeah, it's the brains behind what turns on my lights every night. Can we have a quick peek inside and see what's going on in there? Absolutely. Wow, this is a serious operation you've got going on it here. It is. Yeah, it's been an interesting project for sure. And we've overbuilt it and allowed room for expansion because it's going to power the whole site. And right now I'm kind of, I guess, the guinea pig. But yeah, mostly it's just powering me and the domes right now. So how did you actually go about constructing these geodomes? So we basically ordered them out of the States. They send a supervisor and then we had a construction crew. Um, did insulated concrete form for the bottoms to help insulate things and it took them I think probably about six weeks to do the three domes. Hot hot work but well worth it. Absolutely and I can't wait to see what you've done inside here. Come on in. Welcome to the dome. It is just abundant in here isn't it? Yeah, we've got lots of tomatoes and peppers that are all coming into harvest now. We're kind of at the end of one season and about to go into another, so it's a good time to sneak some tomatoes out of here. What's that sound? Oh, uh, we have a resident frog. Actually, there are quite a few residents in here, but he's a cute little frog I named Fernando, and I think he probably helps eat the bugs in here. Very sweet. So did you have any experience with setting all this up, or was it just a bit of a learning curve? A uh, little of both. I do like to grow things, so I kind of had a natural knack for that. But I've never grown in this environment or year round, so yeah, part of the fun of it is just figuring it all out. I grow my peppers and tomatoes, my old favourites, but I also tried alpine strawberries and popcorn and cantaloupe and carrots. Um, we have peppers starting to ripen up here. And then you've got the giant pool over there as well. Is that designed for aquaponics? in here or? Its main purpose is kind of as a thermal mass in the greenhouse so it keeps things cool in the summer and warm in the winter. There's like a reflective wall on the north that reflects the sun in the water or away from the water depending on the time of year so it helps with the environment in here. And how cool to know that this is supplying so many restaurants and places in the area for their food. Yeah and I was lucky because this area is really into local sourcing and fresh food and the whole culture of you know let's be sustainable within our community so I was welcomed with open arms like I don't have enough produce to fill all the orders so that's a good position to be in. It really is something to be able to step outside and just look at these domes they really just have such presence don't they? They really do. It almost has a really futuristic feeling. Yeah you sometimes roll up onto this site and think am I on a different planet? <laughs> And speaking of the future, what do you think the future holds for you? What do you see as next for this space? Definitely grow the business a little more, try and get some more produce happening, and yeah, just enjoy life. Well, wherever the future takes you, I'm sure it's going to be really exciting. Your tiny house is just beautiful, this location is breathtaking, and everything that you've accomplished here with these domes is just a monumental achievement. Thank you so much for showing me around. Well, thank you for coming. It's been a group project here, lots of hands in, but yeah, we're pretty happy with the progress and look forward to the future. When I envision a utopian future, it looks a lot like this. Tiny houses, sustainability, community, renewable energy, and abundant organic produce. Now, who can argue with that? <laughs>